Welcome to Semi Woke. Hello. I just came in. There was some very aggressively straight energy there. I'm sorry. <laughs> you came in really hyper masculine. <laughs> sorry. Shocked me out of my family. Welcome, welcome to Semi Woke. That's nice. That's nice. Let's right? do a very NPR. Okay. Welcome to Semi Woke. Our energy is not NPR. Not at all. Let's be honest. Not at all. It's not what it's going to okay? be. Okay. It's not who we are. It's Guys, like welcome to the Semi Woke podcast. This is the first time a, uh, a straight, this is the first straight queer collaboration since what, Sharia? Since Eminem and Elton John. Boom. That's right. First one ever. First time two a straight and queer person have ever collaborated on anything, on anything. ever. Yeah. Uh, you guys are here to bear witness. Let's see how it goes. We might fight. Uh, we might fight. <laughs> we might. And that'll be entertaining, though. Yeah. Fuck you it. know, I would be very entertained to see how we would fare in a fight. No, I wouldn't. I mean, if we're talking, you know. Why? What are you trying to say? You trying to say I can't fight? <laughs> I, I believe you could fight because you were raised in the neighborhood that I have gentrified. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so, so you have that. I do Muay Thai. You do Muay Thai. Okay. I have a box cutter under my tongue <laughs> exactly. at all times. <laughs> <All time. laughs> Wait, we should introduce ourselves. We're Sorry. like more. This is the we, this is the next gen of Mortal Kombat characters, by the way. <laughs> Gen- Muay Thai gentrifier, <laughs> Bed Stuy nativist. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, say fuck this podcast. Let's do that. Let's, let's just do that. Let's get into fighting. Let's get. Let's talk about what we're talking. What we're what we're doing. Here. First, let's introduce ourselves. Because let's don't know do who it. Are. Let's let them know who we are. Why don't you start? Oh, okay. My name is Sharia Mattis. My pronouns are she, her, and I am the sixth Backstreet Boy. Oh shit! Yeah, it's been you all along. That's right. Oh my! It's God. actually me singing, doing all the harmonies. <laughs> that was actually me voting Republican. <laughs> 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 And you are. Uh, I am Pranav Bihari. I am a stand-up comedian here in New York, and I am Britney Spears. Yeah. This yeah. Is, this is true. People didn't know this. This but. is true. Especially during the bald years. Yeah. That was, <laughs> that's right. She was actually vacation. Would I had a meltdown and shaved my head and <laughs> turned Indian? <laughs> I was like, I'm fuck this. I'm becoming Indian. If only she fuck had Fuck you, done Dad. That. Like, truly, <laughs> truly. Um, and this is the Semi-Woke Podcast. Semi-Woke Podcast is a podcast where Sharia... A uh, a black queer comedian, uh, younger millennial, teaches me a geriatric straight comedian all about woke culture. Once a week, we discuss one woke topic. Sharia educates me, and uh, I think the end product of this podcast is I become gay. Yes, right. Yes, <laughs> it, 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 this this podcast will not finish until Pranav is fully fully homosexual. Fully. Fully, fully. Homosexual. not dabbling. Yeah, none no, of that. None okay? of that. Yeah, balls even, deep. You can't even be a top. Like I can't, <laughs> I can't even what? No, what? no, it's unacceptable. This is not in the contract. <laughs> um, I need to get paid more zero dollars. Okay, zero dollars. Actually, I wish it was zero dollars. It's like negative dollars. So we're paying. I to do this. know. And on that note, a special thank you to our producer Sam Lichtenstein. Uh, we love Sam. Hilarious thank you, Sam. guy as well. He's genius. Uh, why don't we talk? Should we talk a little bit about what we're doing? To, I think we should start with a little prayer. Okay, I think we should start with a prayer. You know, okay. let's kick things off right. You lead the prayer. Okay, I think we're going to do this one to Lord Ganesh. Okay. Okay, the uh, Lord of Removing Obstacles. Uh, dear Lord Ganesh, please bless Sharia and I and this podcast with many successes, views, hits, virality. Mm. Uh, at the very least, don't get me canceled for being <laughs> stupid. <laughs> Okay, that's the very b- bottom line. Don't get me canceled for being dumb and saying some dumb shit. I'm imagining Ganesh like he's like I don't know. He's like I don't. I can, my miracles only go so far, bro. He's like, oh. he's like you're asking the cosmically impossible like, really? of me right now. That is not true. Um, and just good vibes in general. Yeah, this is a podcast that is born out of love yes. and just absolute love and just fun and yeah. good energy. And that's it. Yeah. Let me do like a little housekeeping preamble. Please. Let's get into it. For anybody who's like Undo. stuck on the word woke. Right. Let's please. So like uh, a lot of people don't really know where woke comes from because now like, you know, conservatives use the word woke is like. Nigger. Oh it's my just, God! We're, 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 we're starting to write off with that. Wow, word. we came right in off. hot with that. That's right. It's just okay. what it is. <laughs> okay. Wow. R E R is what woke is now uh, adapted to. That's right. Yeah. Get used to it. Oof, get, wow. Get, get used my to nipples it. are a little hard. I'm not gonna lie. That was titillating because I was not expecting that at all. <laughs> it does not. I, I didn't E-R think so. I didn't think so. I think it's more the element of surprise. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, like, that was that was spicy. 
Because I'm the one being like, I don't want to get canceled. And you're like, Hardy That's right. That's right. Every once in a while, I'm just going to pop out. Yeah. Of yeah you, came, you came in with a smackdown. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> you know? It's like, oh, my God. But Whew. the word woke is, uh, for just as far as I know, if somebody has a better historical context for this, please enlighten me. But I've, as far as I know, black people use woke all the time. It was sort of mm-hmm. like a hotep term. Yeah. But like also like a, ver- a term of like uh, political consciousness. So woke is basically coming into racial and political consciousness and then it was kind of uh co-opted i think around 2020 is when white people got got a hold of it 2020 i think i saw white people and people in general myself included right and using it i'd say at least 2016 2016 yeah i I don't think it was it had broken through and this is my perception of it right and i'm a straight guy I cavort with whites occasionally mm. as a, as a straight I comedian. I know, I know. Um, and, and woke actually was also having a meeting. It had like a psychedelic connotation as well. Mm, that's People, right. Yes. Third eye open, third basically, eye essentially. Open. Yes. Yes. Uh, a very Hindu concept, I will say. Yes. Dharmic concept. Yes. Um, so that was also one understanding of it. I remember one comedian was like, you're a pretty woke guy. And I was like, oh, inter- in what sense? He's like, oh, you know, you like drugs, essentially. And I was oh. like, okay. Okay. Um, okay. I've never heard it. I've heard it as in the sense that like drugs can make you more woke, right? right? Drugs can make you more conscious of like the environment, of nature, of other people's things. But like right. ultimately, I guess that does have a very. So I've never heard it like that. But I wasn't even in America in 2016. So okay, I don't flex some more. Why don't you? Just right. absolving yourself of any responsibility that's, right. that's happened I in this country. I, I wasn't even here, I guys. Wasn't here. I wasn't here for <laughs> it wasn't, Trump. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. <laughs> you given the shaggy alibi. It wasn't, it wasn't me. That's right. <laughs> Um, but, uh, then yeah. So, okay. I guess it was co-opted a little earlier than that, but in general, the, the meaning was, I, I like to think of the word woke as being conscious of what can hurt, what can harm or help others, like being conscious of your experiences and the experiences of people outside of yourself. Right. So <laughs> like, that is what it is. So like when you're a woke person, you're probably less likely to use words that are harmful or more cognizant of how you approach your speech and, mm. and the way that you interact with people. Right. I think the word has evolved a little bit, right? Cause yeah. I think you, you mentioned hoteps and I think there is a hotep component to wokeness, which actually kind of does dovetail a little bit about what I was talking about in terms of third eye stick. Yeah. And I think a lot of like hotep types in general, that genre of people in general, earthy naturalists of all, all uh, racial genres, if you will, right? Where like woke is something where it's you're kind of you've broken out through the matrix yes. essentially, and you see reality for what it is yes. too, right? Yes, yes, yes. Um, I think now what it is is very close to, is what you described it as, yes. and it has become a completely synonymous with identity politics culture, yes. essentially the culture wars uh, aligning itself fully with identity politics. Yes, and it's come a long way, and it's not necessarily a good way, right, or a bad way, but. I think let's talk about how we got into doing this podcast together before we get into our topic, our our flagship topic for today is that I am a straight male, cis cis male comedian, he, him comedian. I, I, uh, that is who I am. That's my genre as a, as a comedian. Hey, listen, you know, we do what we can. I was born this way. (laughs) Right. Yeah, that's right. That's appropriation right there. (laughs) Okay. It's about being straight now. You were born this way. Yeah, straight as the new gay, okay? <laughs> I was born this way. Um, and Sharia, also born her way, uh, yes. is is on the woker side of things, right? Yes. And the thing is that I, I love you, Sharia, okay? You you, we became friends via my other podcast, which is called Mango Bay, not to plug. You've heard of it. Yes. Um, and it's me and my toxic Indian BFF, uh, Bangladesh BFF, right? We're toxic brown males in a sense. We're not, though, But right? you're not. Yeah, yeah, you're not that bad. We're not at all. And Sharia was, was you were a I fan. I was a fan. You were a of fan. And I, remember I still am. She still is. And I, I first saw you at a bar show. I didn't know who you were. Yes. But you and your friend Maureen, haha, <laughs> JK, JK cat, I remember I you. That. I see you. Yes. We're there, and I'm just looking at these two cuties, and they were looking up at me, and I started roasting you guys, I think, because yes. your friend brought an Arizona iced tea into the bar. <laughs> you have such a good memory, Opa. <laughs> yes, yes. And I don't know, from there, our friendship just kind of developed in yes. a, a really bizarre way. It's an unexpected bedfellows kind of um, 
a thing, but yeah. I, I don't know. It's like, there's a thing that happens with friendships that I love is it doesn't matter what the person is. It's like, you just fuck with them for yeah. some reason. Yeah. 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 You know sure, what I mean? Sure. And I just like, I always talk, love talking to you. We always have an amazing time when yes. we talk and we are very different. We come from very, very different places. Yes. But we always find a way to someplace which is kind of light. And, and I mean that in terms of ah, yes, light, yes. joyous, fun, and yeah. just a good vibe. Yeah. Right? And also, like, yes, you're like a cis hat dude. And you do, like, you know. You yeah, like he said, dude, like a cis hat, like a dude. <laughs> it's a specific kind of dude. You're a different kind of dude. <laughs> a different kind of dude. Yeah. You're like a cis hat dude, but you're, like, not, like, you're not Joe Rogan. You're not, you know, like, fresh and fit. Oh, don't, let's not, let's actually cut that, bleep that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who any of those people are. Good. It's fine, and though. that's why you're okay. It's fine. Yeah, I, I don't. I, yeah. yeah, I mean, I know who Joe Rogan is. Yeah. I we can talk about Joe Rogan yeah. at some other point. But you're not like a manosphere incel. I'm not a manosphere. You're well read. I'm a well. I'm you a fairly well read. Compassionate. Person. You may not have a full. You may not have taken like lots of queer theory courses. I've read you, parts of uh, Judith Butler. Yeah, that's I've right. read Gender Trouble. That's right. Gender you Trouble know. is a little problematic. Now okay. Like, wow. Did you hear that? <laughs> Did you hear that? Coming in very hot. Okay? We gotta update the <laughs> destroying all the sacred cows. That's right. Okay. Coming in. Uh, I've read, but you know, I have some familiarity. And you, right? and you, and you. It's not just the familiarity. You are like a decent human, so you have the openness to like hear me out when I'm when I'm like, hey, Hondo. this is this. You Hondo, know what I mean? Hondo. And you actually and accept. I too. Yes. yes, and that's what I love about you. Yes. I can come out and just say some. Some really dumb, I mean, you know, out of pocket shit around you sometimes, and you'll you'll roll with it on a comedic level, and then you'll gently yes. correct me in a yes. way. And I yes. always appreciate that. Yes. You know what I mean? Because there's one thing that I don't like about where the discourse is right now, yes. which is this thing of like, I refuse to teach you anything. Yes. And I think that's not, it's like, there's, they got to learn, people have to learn somehow in sure. either direction, yeah, right? Sure. There has to be some kind of a conversation that's happening. For sure. Otherwise, what are we doing? You know, we're kind of, we're inbreeding in yes. a sense, right? It becomes like cultural inbreeding. Yes. yes. And it mutates into something that is not healthy. That's right. We're preaching side. to the, to the, to the choir a lot of yeah. times in both sides. Also, there's another thing about like, you are, you are a cis heck comic. Mm -hmm. I'm a queer black comic. Yes. Those worlds, both in New York, mm -hmm. right? Yep. But those worlds are extremely segregated. Like I talk about people... <laughs> That are like huge in the comedy scene. You'll come out with some names, like, and you're like, "Hey, you know uh, Tiffin Cutter Potter," and I'm like, "What? <laughs> Who? You don't know Tiffin Cutter Potter? It's always like a three named, so you know, like they them comedian." And I'm like, "I don't know who that is." I'm like, "Hey, you know uh, Sammy uh, Sammy Ambroglioni Pantaloni uh, Leibowitz, right?" And you're like, "Who?" I can never see him. <laughs> you know? yes, that is the thing, and that is what is leading to like in comedy spaces. Yeah. Like, like I just got to do a whole different set a lot of the times for straight comics, and right? I, and I think, well, you're not as bad, but like, I think a lot of straight. Comics I do. I don't. To, I like. I am. I am an edge lordy person at core. Like, I get a thrill out of it, right? At core, I am. But my comedy is not. Yes. Okay. My comedy is like I am very a transgressive person mm. in general. Mm. It's just a thrill that I have. It's it's a very juvenile part of me. That's you know, been part of who I am since I was very small. My comedy itself, not necessarily very edgy. Like if you see me on stage doing stand up, I think it's very palatable to most people. Yeah. I you can't be super dumb and listen to my comedy. Yeah. I like to flatter myself and yeah. think, no, right? No, and you do you do very thoughtful, intelligent comedy. I think I do intelligent yeah. comedy, yes. but I don't like who wants to say that? It's yeah. not like an asshole, it's right? It's not like, you know, it's not a tension. Like I like being dumb yes. though. And I am a dumb motherfucker at some at you have a certain to do level. Both. You yeah. Do both. yeah. Yeah. Now I will say my on social media I can be a little bit and we're going to talk about it a little we're bit today, it, yeah. right? In today's episode, um, how are you feeling about our intro to semi woke? Are you long as shit? I'm so sorry. I, I don't still, think so. I, I think it's good. It. You think okay. it's too long? Sam, what do you think? Is it too long? Yeah. Okay, oh, okay, there we go. Okay, okay Sam, cool. make me feel pretty. Right? Uh, <laughs> I mean, he was looking right at me when he said he said beautiful. <laughs> yeah, he was. He wasn't at all. He talked about his glasses. He's like he beautiful. Like, beautiful. Like, oh my god, I'm in a Korean drama finally. <laughs> 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 um, should we talk about the topic? <sighs> We're going to get into our topic it's for today. Heavy. Yeah. This episode, rated R. This is about That's this good. is about the R word. It's about the R word. Okay, That's what good. is the R word? I'm going to say it. 
Okay. Because okay. there is a there is a concept called the use mention distinction. Okay. Yes. Right? Where when when somebody uses a word and, yes. and that's actually its context or is referencing the word that's for right. the sake of to discussing the word itself. Yeah. It's that the same word today. As like when like white people use the N word while they're rapping, like it's like, Right. <laughs> no, that's that's a great example, right? It's a good example. No, it's a good example in the yeah. sense that like, okay, that's that's verboten. You should not as a white person or anybody who's not black really should yes. never be using the N word, especially yes. with a hard E R, like in context, yes, right? Except for Hudson but, Minaj. But, yeah, okay. I don't know about that exception, but you're, that's not that's not the example we want to. That's not the past we want to be giving. <laughs> Indian South Asian males have just come out of stopping using the N word. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. This is a, this is a, we're, we'll get into this in episode two. Yeah. Um, so we're talking about the word retarded. Yes. Okay. And I'll just start with this. Sorry. Let me just start with everything. Might be a big content warning, possible trigger warnings for probably every episode. So Pro- probably, <laughs> probably right? every episode. We're, we're talking gonna... about some thorny issues yes. sometimes, yeah. right? Yes. Um, but the R word, retarded. Mm-hmm. It's a word. I have used it many times. Yeah. I am a user of the word. Yeah. Um, you are not a user of the word. I'm you cr- you cringe. You get upset time. with me. Yep. And you're not the only one among my friends who yeah. do this, yeah. right? I have a, a lot of friends who are like, don't say that. Don't be. A, I'm like, what's wrong with it? Come on. Yeah. Who wants a little? Yeah. It was a treat, you yeah. know? Let me say. <laughs> treat. Right? That's yeah. how that's how I've used the word retarded. And let's. I want to talk about this, mm-hmm. right? Because yeah. I think there's a lot in this word and in the discussion around the word. Yes gets really to the core of what's happening in our culture right now. Yes. And, and, it and gets, generationally. Generationally. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. it does. So I am a user of the word. I've never really used it on stage. Uh, I have used it in social media content. Yes. I've had a couple of videos where I've directly talked about the word. And it, they went, people really liked the video. I mm-hmm. had one video where it was a TikTok and like, you know, got like 50, 60 comments, that kind of thing. And I'm not a huge social media guy in general, but... I'm mid. I'm very mid, though. Mid is bad. You know? You be your bad. I'm, I don't have the discipline to really be on that, right? I can't. <laughs> but, um, and I was like, this is thrilling. Look at all these people engaging with this content of me using the R word, you know? Mm. And aren't I an edgy, funny guy? And I loved it, mm. you know? I did. Um, but... I, I'm very open to, di- I really want to discuss and understand it. I have been telling myself up until this episode that today, this is going to be my last hurrah of using the R word. Really? But let's see how the conversation yeah. goes. You might radicalize me further. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, no. So this is on you right now. By the time we finish this episode, you're like a full Nazi. You're like, <laughs> you're like a final episode revealing your swastika type. What's the wrong, the wrong the wrong swastika, <laughs> yeah. Hack and croys, they That's call right. it. Okay. Yeah. Indians get very touchy about the swastika. Good. So, I, yeah. I, they should. Yeah. I would. I, yeah. I, I, I feel like the swastika is going to become, like, is, is like woke is going to become the swastika. Okay. Like Could, be. Could be the rainbow flag, <laughs> maybe. The rainbow flag is going to become the swastika. So this, this is, this is, this is my relationship to the R word right mm-hmm. now. I do use it, mm-hmm. um, but I'm starting to understand a little bit why it's not, but I want to discuss it with you. Why don't you go ahead and tell me what is your relationship to it? So I actually, so we're like not that much farther in part, but the, 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 like, what are we like six, seven years apart? Be closer to 10, 10, but like we like that is a huge generational difference, I think in many it ways. Yeah. So like, I grew up, like, maybe I started using it in, like, elementary school because, like, people used it in movies. People said it on TV all mm-hmm. the time. And we used it as the word meaning, like, stupid, yes. dumb, bad, right? Yeah. And then I think as I got older, there was a big push to, like, make the make spaces more inclusive, especially, like, mm-hmm. as kids. And they taught us, like, that's not a good word to use. It's hurtful to people with intellectual disabilities. It's hurtful to people who love anybody with intellectual <clears throat> disabilities. So right. we got it, you know, that and gay as, like, a pejorative. We got that, like, from middle school. Right? Gay, I, I get. And listen, I gay, I in middle school, I use gay as a slur. Now I use it as a compliment. That's right. You know, Sick. I'm like, yo, that shot was gay as hell, bro. That's right. Call of Duty, I'm in there, bro. Right. That was gay as hell, dog. Right. That was good. The R word, I see what you're saying. There, there is something that happens through the education system with mm-hmm. it, right? Mm-hmm. My big contention with objections to saying the R word, to saying retarded, right, in a joking or offensive way, is that I don't know that people use the word retarded in a clinical sense anymore. They Not, don't, yes. Right? Yeah. 
And you, when you look at the evolution of language, I'm just taking you through my thought process. Yeah. So many words that we use were at one point a clinical designation for something, mm-hmm. and and they have evolved out of that into common usage, right? Other yes. words include idiot. Other words yep. include imbecile, imbecile. right? Moron. Moron. Mm-hmm. All of these things were at one point clinical designations. They're like, doctor, uh, the diagnosis, you're a complete fucking moron yes, or something, yes, right? yes. yes. And now it's it's out of that. It's been grandfathered into just a slang term like those other words. Yeah. Uh, I think so. I'm, I'm curious about that. Like, how do we feel about this? Is this is really about the evolution of language yes. for me? Yes. Right. Well, I, I think that's for every single term that we think like colored was a term. Negro was a term right. that was like more, I guess, clinical or, or whatever. Like that was the preferred term. But I think there is an element of this of like. We keep moving the goalpost and keep changing the words without changing the way the culture responds to people, right? Mm. So, like, the reason why the R slur became a slur is because people used it pejoratively. People would, I mean, like, I don't know if you know, like, people with intellectual disabilities happen to be extremely susceptible to, like, violence and sexual abuse and a lot of things like that. People, you know, Mm -hmm. it's dangerous to be a person with any kind of disability in this world. Right. But especially with intellectual disabilities, Mm -hmm. we have a huge fear of people like that. So, like, you know, the idiot or the word idiot, then that starts taking, be taken out of context and used for everything else. And then we, they have to change the clinical term, the the word moron. They have to clean did the word right, done. So they right. have to change it. And there's a continuous refinement a of continuous the language, continuous refinement right. of the language, because no matter what the, the, if the word, the word is being used pejoratively because we don't respect people who have disabilities. A hundred percent. That's right? really what it is. And so we need to attack that core thing. But in the meantime, for me, I think the best thing to do is just like, don't use words that are hurtful. Like those are the words that were being used that people, when they were being discriminated against, when they were being, uh, there was violence being enacted upon them. Like mm, the, right. that, that's, that's why it changes. Right? right. So we have to move with the culture, but we also tr- have to try to move the culture if we can. Right. So this is a, this to me brings up a very interesting topic. Is it, is it possible to create a zero harm world? Is it, is it possible to create a world where there is no meanness in it? Right. I mean, is it right? We it, might get this taken off the air immediately. If I say what I really want to say, let's go for it. We can create, I believe deep down that we could create a world Mm -hmm. without harm, but we're going to have to do a lot of harm first. Uh, Okay. So (laughs) this is, so right now what you're talking about, you're talking, you're speaking like a vanguardist of every, uh, revolutionary movement that's ever happened. Right. But none of, so few of those utopian movements ever achieve a certain success. And my belief is that world, the world is very complex. Right. And I don't think it is possible to create a zero harm world. I don't think it is without causing an, what's happening when you do that? Here's my, here's my contention, right? Is basically you're offloading all the violence and all the contingency that exists in nature and in reality. Mm -hmm. And you're basically offsourcing it into one central place, which is the state, right? Mm -hmm. And, and what's happening there is it's all, the violence is being transmuted and centralized into one place, which is doing the ultimate violence to everybody. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. And so we're talking in many ways about a monopoly on violence yeah. and, and that, you know, things like that. But I don't, I don't think it ever, the, my point being, it's impossible to create a zero harm world. It truly is. Okay. So this is the thing. Like, I don't believe, like, of course, nature has its elements of violence, but like the real tea is capitalism is the real reason why I'm, we hate and fear people with disabilities because of capitalism entirely they can't go work in factories Mm -hmm. they can't they can't you know make money on the stock market and they can't you know run a prison Mm -hmm. they can't run run a private prison we won't allow them to (laughs) and therefore people with disabilities are not worthy if you can't run a private prison Mm -hmm. what use are you well i mean look there there is a question about the utility right being utilitarian yes under capitalism, not utility, not utility. Period. Because mm-hmm. people, I believe, people of all kinds of abilities and genders and blah blah blah, all have some kind of use that we are we are missing because we live under the stupidest system alive. Right. Right. Sure. Right. Sure. I mean, look, pet capitalism is a pernicious, all pervasive system. All at pervasive. This point, right. Yeah. yeah. So in many ways, what are we doing? We're fish who are talking about what would it be like to live outside of Boom. water. That's really yes. 
tea, you know? tea, tea, uh, So tea. it's a very difficult conversation to really have, though. I don't even think, I think we're fish in a bowl who are like, what would it be like to live in the in the, in the ocean? Sea? That's really what we That's are. That's a great metaphor. I That's think that, really that is a very interesting metaphor. I think we right? need to make a dick joke or something in between. I don't want. We're being really yes. high level. <laughs> I, you are. We're right. Let's bring it down to brass tacks, okay? Yes, yes, yes. Our word, here's... Here's the thing. I don't. I don't believe it's actually possible to create a truly zero harm society or world. I don't think it's. It's not nature's way. And I'm not saying that that should get green light people to just be like, let's fucking harm some motherfuckers. Because someone huh? just turned off this podcast and went out to beat the shit. Out. <laughs> <laughs> so people. I have a. I, I think there's a lot behind intention too, right? I think I have a friend, very woke, um, a very dear friend of mine. She's a writer. She, it's not you, but you guys would get along. I think you, you guys know each other. She's a collaborator of mine. And she gets very mad at me when I say the word retarded, right? Yeah. yeah. And she's like, don't say it. But one time we were in conversation, she's like talking about so-and-so. She's like, man, this person, I think they're R-worded. She said, I think they're R-worded. I was like, what do you mean they're R-worded? What does that mean? You can't just You not, can't just say our word it. You can't be like, I have a friend, my name's Sheree. She's in the middle of an N word. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's why it's like, hey, listen, we wanted to you know, we wanted to stay in the neighborhood, but there were too many N words moving <laughs> in. Like, no, it's horrific. Right? It's the intention yes, there. It's the intention. You know? For sure. That's one big part of it is the intention, mm-hmm. but also like the use of the word. Like, I think there is an element like people always be like, oh, you're triggered or you're triggered. Mm-hmm. But like, yeah, people can be triggered. Like I, I, okay. Oh, so let me like say off top, like everything I say is based off my weed muddled smoky. Memories. <laughs> None of this is properly researched, but I remember watching a documentary about like a British documentary about a bunch of kids who were uh, intellectually disabled. And one of them had been repeatedly attacked in his neighborhood, uh, in his neighborhood, in like England, like, you know, where I thought y'all didn't do that shit. But like the British are the most perverted and and depraved and meanest people. (laughs) They, they truly are on a global scale and just like locally too. Okay, every you know? Indian always has a <laughs> yeah, Exactly. <laughs> hey, you're Jamaican. You be, you better be, you're in the trenches there with me, okay? 100%. 100%. <laughs> but, and like he, so like they would attack him like physically and like really horribly and they'd of course always use the R word. Mm-hmm. That's what they called him every time that when they, when they saw him, I they shouted. I thought they had like another version of that word there. Like you're a defective you're or a something. Defective. You're a defective. <laughs> they have different words, but that is their word. They, right. they use that word and they, and they like, that's what they would shout before that's how he knew they mm-hmm. was coming to get him right right and i always think about that and i think about like my mom's stories about like how when she was in england as well actually and in america that's what they would say nigger and then that's how she knew it was about to start you right. know what i mean <clears throat> so that is triggering the use of the word is triggering especially with like you could if you say that word and someone has like a fucking PTSD attack of, do you want to be responsible for that? You know what I mean? Right. You don't want to be responsible for that. So like, even if your intention is to be like, no, I'm not saying you're that. I'm saying this other thing is that, you know what I mean? Right. Like that, that really got me to be like, ah, I get it now. And I get it because unfortunately I also have, the experience of oppression, the history Mm -hmm. of oppression to relate it to. And so that's how I make that thread. And I think it's harder for people who don't have those experiences to make that link. Look, I think, look, you know, there's an interesting thing to me, which I've been trying to figure out and understand about myself and using the word retarded, right. In a joking and, and so on way. And there is one thing, my formative experience with the word retarded. Yes. Okay. If we can get into it, let's do it. Is when I was in fourth grade, Um, you know, I was a funky little kid. I was spaced out. I was weird. I was very, I was, I was a joker. I was a class clown type. And, uh, in fourth grade, my teacher at the time, her name was Mrs. Miller. Um, call her out. Absolutely. Call that bitch out. She, my parents had a student teacher conference or a parent teacher conference. Mm -hmm. And she was like, your son's retarded. Wow. And it made my mom cry. Of course. It made my mom cry. And I think, you know, because they're thinking like they think he is actually there's he is actually delayed. Yeah. Right. And, and, and she's et cetera, like, et cetera. <laughs> like right. and you she's like, 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 like
Like, uh, that, that N-word retarded. And my parents were like, what's going on here? What is this country? Uh, they're saying N-word, wow. R-word. Public school. It was, it was like, and and it, it's funny because you know why she did that? Is because one time we had to do like a career thing. Like, what do we want to be? And I was like, I want to be a boxer. Because Mike Tyson was in, I was like obsessed with Mike Tyson when I was a kid. Um, you know, he had just gone to jail. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm I mean, joking. I'm joking. Did. No, but and it's, so I like really wanted to be a boxer. And so I saw boxers taping up their hands. And at one point I just kept wrapping my hands in like duct tape. And I was like, Hey, this is me. And I'm walking around with my hands just completely like blocked with duct tape. And she was like, this motherfucker's retarded. <laughs> That's like what was going through her mind. And I got in trouble for that. And she went and told my parents, you know, at the conference, she's like, I think he's retarded. I'm telling you, 90s teachers were... Dude, she was she was horrid. They you were know? all it was a bullies. Thing. <laughs> I, they were. They were. I, I was bullied by a lot of teachers. Me too. Actually, yeah. I really was. Yeah. And it wasn't an isolated incident. And I'm not saying I probably wasn't... I'm not... I am definitely was a frustrating kid to work with, okay? I definitely was, As right? all children are. I mean, I They was. all are. I'm not trying to victim blame myself. I was a little, you know... Okay, look, whatever the equivalent of saying retarded now as they do as, as an adult, whatever the equivalent was as a kid, I was probably doing that. You know what I mean? Like, I was I was a little bit out of pocket, but yeah, again. You were you a know. child. Yeah. But, you know, my, it was very jarring to my parents, and I think there was something in me, right? Mm-hmm. You know how trauma replicates itself through 100%. you traumatize one person, then they, yep. they pass it along, yep. right? They pay it forward. And I think in a weird way, I saw the impact of that word yeah. on my mom mm. and my dad. My dad, also a very stoic guy, I think it also had gotten emotional after that mm. meeting. I think I saw the impact of that and it did something to me i was like yeah i'm retarded i'm gonna make other I'm people retarded yes, too. Yes, i'm like yes. all you motherfuckers is retarded yes, now. yes yes maybe that's what it and is. also i'm maybe, trying to unpack that maybe to take the juice out of the word especially take the the, the sting out of the word sure if you use it a lot it no longer becomes i think there as, is something to I that think i think I, th- that. I think there's that i think there, it is the wholesale projection project mm. of it though mm. you know what i mean where i'm now taking this thing that i experienced which is pain and now i'm just Boom. Everybody yeah. else is retarded now. Yes. yes. We're all retarded now, yes. this motherfucker. Which huh? means I'm no longer a problem, <laughs> right? In a sense, yeah. Yes, yes. In a sense, yeah. And I think, you know, we're veering into kind of metaphorical literary terrain and, mm-hmm. and, and, and the psychoanalyzation of what happened to mm-hmm. me. But I think there is something to it, right? I got bit by the R-word vampire. Yes. And then I became yeah. the main, the biggest That's R-word right. vampire. That's right. You know? <laughs> It's a really good idea for like a... Yeah, I'm Count Targula or something, okay? Yeah, okay, I did just say it again. It's, it's fucked up. It's gonna Listen, other people, my, my niece and nephew, they're like, you can't say spaz. I'm like, what you are you talking yeah. about? I'm out here holding the line for retarded. You guys are talking about spaz. What else are they going to take from Beyonce us? Beyonce and Lizzo got in trouble for, for the word. I heard about that. and yeah. They're bulletproof personalities. But apparently not because we are saying, and they, they correct it. You know what I mean? True. You gotta be like Beyonce. What you think you better than Beyonce now? I mean, I'm working towards it. I'm trying to get there. You actually are. You're getting more and more snatched every day. <laughs> every day you look more and more like Beyonce. I'm not Wait till I get it. my extensions, okay? Oh, don't even play with me. <laughs> you told don't me. Even play with me. All you I'm wanted gonna... me to get extensions before we started because yes. I just got a haircut. I, I snipped my luscious curly locks. Yes. Uh, for because uh, of various You're TV like, appearances. Hello, two, 2023. Two A. Yeah. Locks. Do you know what that means? No. That's a hair typing. Tell me. So like my hair is like really thick and curly. It's four C. Okay. Right. And so yours is just a little like has that I have like loose curl. ringlets. It's loose ringlets, so yeah. it's like two A. Mm. So yeah, 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 yeah. So interesting. Yeah, yeah. I can't believe we never talked about. This. I think this is going to be an episode. However, absolutely, we should have a texturism episode. I'm going to get a blowout for a it. Texturism do- is this what it is called? Yes. There's too many words now. <laughs> There's words. too many good, words. Good. Wait, let me talk about my please. Yes, my relationship with the R word. Okay. okay. So my mom is probably not gonna watch this, but if she does, sorry. Okay. She's always like, you always complain about this shit. My mom was a very good mother. She's very tried, very hard. Blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. But one of the things that she did, she's also a traumatized. Immigrant woman. parents are the least woke people on earth. Boom. Okay. Boom. Let's just put that out. A hundred percent. We were all raised by like Sam Kinison or yes. some shit. You know what I mean? Or like Andrew Dice, Andrew Clay, Dice Clay. Right. That's what's my. Mom. Andrew Dice Clay was my mother. <laughs> Can you imagine being breastfed by Andrew Dice Clay? The, the Actually, s- I have. I've had several nightmares, dreams when I started comedy. I was like, tastes like cigarettes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, so my mom, 
she used to, and she stopped doing it lately, but like she used to for a very, very long time, call me the R word whenever I did anything. Oh. Like anything that she didn't like. She's very particular about things. Mm-hmm. I'm like the opposite of my mother. My mother's very particular about how you look and how you present yourself. Uh-huh. And I was not. I was wow. just like a. You and know? so she would call you that word? All the time. In All a Jamaican accent? <laughs> Sometimes. I'm looking retarded, girl. <laughs> What you doing there, Sharia girl? You're looking retarded. She's not the leprechaun. I don't know. That's the only way I can do a Jamaican accent. I'm sorry. (laughs) I'm sorry. Imagine being beat by the leprechaun. That's a lie. It's even more traumatic than what I went through. Unlucky charms. (laughs) Unlucky charms. The Jamaican cereal. You got me lucky charms. (laughs) He's beating the bell. I've only had potatoes <laughs> for the last three That's weeks. <laughs> no famine jokes. <laughs> we can all joke about the Irish we potato famine at this point. Because we're, all we're not boat, in Ireland. Right, exactly. And also, like, you know, you know, you're you're y'all are black too for the purposes of this conversation. In a sense, yeah. Um, so like if I wore something like, you know, or my collar, one side of my collar was inside out yeah. or I used to just dress kind of crazy. You know, I used to put like little colored band-aids all over my jeans. And I'm like, you look, you know what I mean? All the time. And it hurt me so, so much because then she'd be like, Every, oh, everybody thinking that. Everybody thinks that you look da da da. And so I, it was like a problem for me. And then when we started getting the talks about like why we shouldn't use that word or what words hurt people, I was like, wait, that my mom uses that and it's extremely hurtful for Mm -hmm. me. And I would never want to make anyone feel the way my mom makes me feel when I step out of the house looking goofy. You know what I mean? No doubt, dude. Yeah. And so, and I don't want anybody to look at me the way my mom says people are looking at me. Right. So I, like I, that really is what really reinforced me like not using that word to the point where like you use, use that word and I don't say anything when you use it. I, I my know. butthole just clenches. Wow, really? Yeah, that's what you're feeling. That's the energy that's of my so butthole just. Interesting. I'm sorry. <laughs> Listen, no, I am sorry. Cause I had no idea. I told you what my relationship is to the word. Yeah. We responded to it obviously different ways, which undoubtedly has to do with our gender. I'm, I'm just going to put that so. up. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. I was going to say the whole thing about harm, it's a very masculine thing. We do mm. want to harm. We like to hurt. Mm. We like violence. Bitches okay? love harm. We just love a different I know. type of I know. harm. Like I know. a deep. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like get up in I know. There. Y'all are even more evil. We definitely are. Men are just dumb and like, oh, I want to fucking. You guys are yes. like, oh, I want to ruin it all. There you go. You yes. Know. Yes. We get in there. We fuck the whole system. I know. Up. I know. Yes. Anyway, so. I don't want to sidetrack you. It's so interesting. You had that experience and that was how you responded. I had my experience. This is how I responded. Yeah. And this all actually weirdly connects to our mothers in a weird way, yeah. right? Our mother's responses to us yes. and how we're perceived. Yes. Fucking crazy. Yes. The withering gaze of our mothers. Yes. Right? You saw how much that hurt your mom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's a, I didn't make that connection until just now. Well, wow. you, I didn't make the connection at all. You said We're it. making it together. <laughs> And then I was like, oh, yeah, we're Listen, we're sense. making it together. Uh, how are you feeling about where we're at on the discussion? Am I going to, re- am I retiring the R word? I think I might have to. Really? I just like, I don't like, uh, the thing is, I like being transgressive, but I don't really like hurting people. That is who I am. I That's, that that actually yeah. described, my brother once described me, he's like, you're an impish personality. I was like, I looked it up, an impish is a person, a person causes mischief, yeah. but one does not ca- intend harm, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I took that to heart when my brother said, you're just impish, bro, because yeah. I used to be like, am I bad or something? I was a little kid, everyone was always telling me I'm a bad kid, I'm bad, I'm bad, I'm bad. But it's like, you're not bad at all, you're impish. And I was like, I love this guy. He's a man of few words, but the few words he does say count, right? I love first generation immigrant bad. <laughs> I know. You're like, such a bad kid, you only get A minuses. <laughs> so so i th- but my intention is never i never want to hurt anybody yeah. that is the last reason it's the last reason i ever do comedy i like joy yes. i like everyone being together laughing yes. i love that shit you and know? Opa, honestly that's why i fuck with you okay you know what i mean is because yes you're impish like me too i like to make people uncomfortable with my comedy yeah. you see my comedy. i do yes you, you know do you're I mean? very transgressive yes. as well dude but i don't want to harm anyone right and i think a lot of straight cis comics are like, yeah, are you triggered? <laughs> I mean, it is like Why a joker who I so serious lighting the pile of money on fire type wow, vibe. Wow, aren't you right? a fucking, yeah, you know what I mean? But like, like I actually talked to comics who were like, I got on stage to be able to say offensive things. Yeah, and it's like, really? 
nigga, that's what you came on stage for. I'm from no, a black yeah. cis man during the height of the like fucking. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, what? That's what you came to say? Well, uh, there's a whole genre of of black male comics though who are loves coming out with that. You we know, need, we're I go on Facebook it. once a month, and as soon as I open it up, it's like ten different posts. Uh, it's like old white men and old black men comedians who are like, I, I do this to be offensive. That's and right. I'm like, what? I have a whole theory about that. Will that will get us? That will get me canceled. So let's not. Okay, then we'll, let's. We'll do it later. Okay. <laughs> we'll do a okay. different episode. And I do believe in the right to offend. I will always believe in that. In I the do right stand by to that. offend. What do the you right mean? To, I mean, I believe in the right to say shit, to say fucked up. Sure, shit, but right? I also believe in the right to you say that fucked up shit, and I react to that. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. We're both exercising our free speech. I agree with that a thousand percent. Yeah. This is the whole thing. I I don't like it when people are like cancel culture. I'm like, shut the fuck up, okay? Because back in the fucking eighties and nineties or whatever, you know, when it was like Prince who's out there talking about beating off, it was your types, you know, who are like, we need to cancel Prince. He's talking about masturbation. Fuck you, Tipper Gore. Mm. Wow. Okay. You know you what really, I'm saying? You really went back in the. Be, I did right. <laughs> this is, this is the generational that, yes. gap between yes. us, right? Yeah. Or B- Bart Simpson or whatever. You know what I mean? And George George Bush is like, this is needs to be stopped or whatever, right? Yeah. All the way through. Right. It's like it's not about what's actually right or what's wrong. Yes. It's about exercising power. And, and it's also another thing is like back in the day, you could say whatever. Have yeah. you seen Eddie Murphy? Like I love Eddie Murphy, you know what 100%, I mean? Hundred percent. Eddie Murphy. Listen, he has a he has a, a track a track title on Eddie Murphy Delirious, Delirious. called F Word. You know what I'm talking. You yes. can say it. I can't. <laughs> F word revisited. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's the name of the title. Yes. Looking at the title, I die laughing because yes. I'm like, this is insane. Yes. Even Bernie Mac has some stuff like, you know what I mean? Like, which is, and this is another thing that mm-hmm. we, this is why we can meet in the middle because sometimes even the most offensive, unacceptable shit is kind of funny. Uh, this, uh, this, this, and this is the line that I, I always like to try and ride. Yeah. You know what I mean? You like to ride. I do ride that. Good yeah. comedians are always seeking that line. Yes. You but know? you stay or that's the trick is balancing between like making you uncomfortable to make you think and making you uncomfortable to make you upset. Right. You now, know what I mean? I, I think it's a hacky thing if you're like, everybody can laugh at my jokes. At the same time, I do endeavor for everybody to be able to laugh. Yes. I don't necessarily always achieve it. Yeah. Right. Uh, Cause some people are just dumb. Yeah. No. Dead ass. <laughs> you know? Dead fucking ass. <laughs> some people are dumb. <laughs> and, but I, so, you know, again, this is, as comedians, this is a very touchy thing in general, right? Yeah. Cause we all want that right to be able to fuck up and make mistakes. Cause yes. you know, you have the potential to find real gold and really brilliant shit that way yeah. too. Anyway, this is going to be a running theme. I think throughout Throughout the semi woke podcast, yes, yes, um, yes. I think I'm retiring the R word. Okay. What would you say to someone who is thinking about retiring the R word? Um. To push God, that's word. that's a great question. Mm. Am I at that level yet? Am I a black belt warrior against the R word? You're up to the point where you're like, I'm. I think I'm gonna. What was the thing that pushed you over? Just not wanting to cause harm. I mean, look. I think when you I'm never going to tell somebody to not say a word one way or the other. Actually, that's actually a place where I'm going to, that that's actually my position on that yes. okay. is that I'm not going to be the person to tell somebody that they should speak one way or another. Okay. Right. I will of course exercise my right to respond to that person. Yes, however, but I'm want, not going to tell you, but I'm not going to tell a person don't use the R word anymore. I think, I think for me, it's, it's, it's an, uh, an evolution of things and I'm probably going to slip, slip. Yes. You know, for sure. I probably am going to let it slip here and there and because it's a learning process, sure. right? And yeah. it's something that's part of muscle memory. When I see something that's dumb, I'm like, that's... Uh, yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, but I'm not going to be the guy who's going to be like, don't do that. Yes. Right? Yes. And that is... Wait. Let me, I know we got to wrap this up, mm-hmm. but that is also the thing about woke mm. is that I don't like is that... What the whole point of woke is that you are woke. You wake up right. and you see how you can benefit and harm other people and move accordingly. Right. Not that you then become the prescriptive pedant that's telling everybody else, right. like, no, don't do that. You you aren't woke enough. Mm-hmm. Like that is what it has become, is become like a point the finger. And honestly, point that finger right the fuck back at you. Okay. Hell <laughs> yeah. That's truly. That truly. That is that to, to me that is the that to me is the, my central gripe with woke culture as it is is it's people who 
it's, it's very purity test oriented, yes. you know, and everybody acts like they're not complicated and that they're not fucked up in their own ways and that they're not harmful or offensive. And that's the problem. That's, that's the people who aren't woke. Exactly. You know, boom. I love that. I think that's a great, a great place to put a pin in our yeah. discussion on the R word. Uh, I was going to say retarded one last time. Get it out of my system. Of um, I have a special pillow that I scream it into. No, I'm just kidding. I don't. You should get one. <laughs> <You> should get <laughs> one. <laughs> Um, um, I, should we get into our next segment? Yes. Uh, we've got a special segment, guys. Thanks for bearing with us. This is our first episode. All of our, our episodes are not going to be uh, this long. super long, um, but this our, you know we wanted an intro, uh, tell you guys what we're about, all that, as well as get into it. Our next segment is called Reply Guy Theater. Yes. Uh, I'm very excited for this. This is a segment where Sharia and I find our favorite comment section from the internet. It yes. could be from any given platform, social media and otherwise. Go through the comment section and reenact them for you all here in a dramatic fashion. Now, yes. Sharia, you found this one for us because you are amazing. Yes. Uh, this I don't one know. is from Tumblr. This is from Tumblr. Wow. Yes, this, this is, is deep. Tumblr. This is some deep OG internet shit. I love me some you know? Tumblr. Um, this is a Tumblr thread, and the picture, which was posted by Unbossed, Unbossed, uh, it's a it's a retweet uh, or a repost from somebody named Hot Meat Sixty Nine. The post says is a picture of a bumper sticker that says "My girlfriend has a U.S. Army logo on it," and the bumper sticker says "My girlfriend's husband." Fights for your freedom. Yes. Fucking gold. Let's go over who the players okay. are. So who, the let's players are, introduce our cast of characters. Yes, our cast this. of characters. Yes. There's Hot Meat Hot 89. Hot Meat 89. <laughs> the name alone is this guy is a hero. Yes. Uh, Hot Meat 89. And then a whole cast of assailants. Yes. Who are, who, are, who, are, who are assailing Hot Meat 89, who I would just call the Patriots. And the it's Patriots. multiple people. I'll break them down to you so they're not all, all anonymous. East Bay Fat Man, Low Tier Memer, of course. Uh, Penguatron, yes. Hitting on Cullen, mm-hmm. uh, the, the Tyrannosaur who just posted who's an just image, cool. yeah. uh, Herd Book, mm-hmm. World Her- uh, uh, BLM, BLM 1997. 1997. They're an ally, cool. actually, yeah. yeah. Uh, C. Pino, 1973. Uh, and that's it. Yeah. You are going to play the part of Hot Meat 89. Yeah. I am going to play all of the Patriots. Everyone else. Are you have to do different voices, though. I have to, oh, gosh. So this, right. this is challenging. All right. I'm a novice actor still, but... Uh, Let's start ready? with the, the post, my girlfriends. Okay. Let's start with the post. Go ahead. Um, read it. Your, oh, I read it. Yeah. My girlfriend's husband fights for your freedom. Amazing. And Hot Meat, his 89's uh, caption is... Have fun in the war, dumbass. I'll be at home fucking military wives. <laughs> All right, me. Damn. Good way to get your fucking window kicked in. Shut the fuck up and raise my son, bootlicker. <laughs> All fun and games until some of three confirmed kills shows up at your doorstep with a baseball bat. Oh, I'm not at my house, though. I'm at yours with your wife. It's beastly, dude. <laughs> Penguatron comes in. Uh, but he's got shooters all over the world, even when he's away. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just shot a hot load in his wife. <laughs> That's an incredible. I mean, like if this was a war, this guy would be Achilles. He would be, yes. You know? He would be a drone fighting strike. off. Ready? <laughs> Ready? Hitting on Colin. That's me, a patriot. You ungrateful asshole. My boyfriend might be fighting for your freedom, and you're here mocking him for keeping your pathetic ass safe from the threats of the world? If a war comes to our country, we're not saving you, you dumbass ungrateful fuck-up of a human being. It's definitely a Karen, asymmetrical haircut Karen. Yes. Your boyfriend is fighting for oil and killing civilians and probably cheating on you. He's a scumbag, which is why I just fucked his mom to make a better son. I mean, going deep. There's a whole narrative metafiction this guy's creating. <laughs> and then here's this. I don't know if we can super. I don't know if we can picture. show it. This is a this is a picture, a painting of a co- of a jester throwing meat to dogs over a wall. A and bunch of dogs. hungry dogs yes. underneath. Then a patriot says, "The fool taunts the hungry dogs, but the dogs have their day, and the fool becomes a feast." Oh, word, your girl about to be a feast soon as you get deployed, boot boy. <laughs> BLM 97 comes in, an ally, World Heritage Post. Is that like the new World Star? Yes. <laughs> World Heritage Post, hello. There's some Tumblr specific yeah, things that nobody it. knows about except for the weirdos. Okay. <laughs> Whoever was the first person to post this is the biggest piece of shit in the world. You're an amoral asshole. <laughs> Same guy. 
Same guy. Hot Meat 89, you are a disgrace. You don't deserve to be called an American. You don't even have the right to call yourself a man. I don't call myself a man, but your wife still calls me to fuck. Boom. Ah! And with that, he dropped the mic and the load, presumably, on a military wife. Yes. Yes. Uh, this has been our first episode of Reply Guy Theater. Yes. Uh, guys, send in. Feel free to send in. DM Sharia or me. I'm at Pranahaha. You're at Sharia Mattis Comedy. Yes. Sharia Mattis Comedy. S-H-E-R-I-A-M-A-T-T-S. I M-A-T-T-I-S. Yes. Oh, my God. Yeah. Bro. DM us for now. We're going to have an email up and up and running soon where you yes. can send us your favorite comment threads. We will reenact them for you with Con Gusto. Yes. Con Brio. Yes. Okay. Um... Do we have any final words for this episode? Sam, how many how how long are we in this now? This is pretty good, dude. We did it, yes. That's pretty economical. Yes. We're some verbose motherfuckers. We are. We're we prolix are. as fuck up in here. Yes. I think that was economical for us. Uh, I think so too. I think we we, we hit it out the park. I Somebody's a... watching being like, girl, relax. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely gonna give this episode a few hits myself. Um this has been the semi woke podcast. That's right. Well, uh, thanks for the, thank, listening to the Thanks for episode. tuning in. Our yeah. next episode is going to be about... Don't say it. We're not going to say it. We're not going to say it. It's about it's to be gonna, something else. Relax. It's going to be something else. Watch it. Show. It'll it's be gonna, right. it, It's going to be a good time. We hope you had fun. Yes. Thanks for tuning in. I love you, old fuck. I love you, too. <laughs> God damn. We're hugging right now, okay? Uh, we love you. Love you, Sam. Love thanks you. for tuning in. We'll we see you guys you, next week. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Stay woke. Stay woke. Semi-woke. Stay semi-woke.